So the next button we're going to be checking out is this guy in here. So it says motor on or jog. So if you are, I say, want to turn the motor on, as you can see, my motor is on now. So you need to click A and motor on, and that will activate the motor. So basically, only then you are really able to start a operating. If you click the dead man switch here in the back, you can start using these buttons here to navigate each axis. And that will get ourselves to these buttons in here. So these are basically access navigations buttons for manual teaching, so manual modes. So uh, uh, each one of those you can see in here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's, it's, it, the, it can be operated by seven. My robot has got only six axes. So obviously the seventh one is not going to be in operation at all. So uh, in each axis, you can see in the manual, they will be represented by J. So WJ1, J2, J3, J4, J5, J6. And if you look at the illustration in, into the drawing, you'll understand which axis it represents each of those buttons. And self-explanatory, plus and minus, will be one way or the other. So another thing with, uh, with uh, this uh, uh, motor on button, which I uh, forgot to mention, as you can see in here, there is a jog on to it. So jog only works if the dead man switch is pressed. If the dead man switch is pressed, and then you are trying to move in the slow, as you can see my manual speed at the moment is at two. And if I move it, so let me, let me switch the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be activating the, the dead man switch. I'm going to try to move the axis. See, it moves very slowly, but if I click jog, it will speed it up. So let's try to go backwards. It will speed it up. It moves slowly, as you can see slowly, but if I want to quickly get to the point and then move slowly, I just click jog and it will activate the speed at fast speed. So in short, to really explain that is, is really to hold in the dead man button by holding the position. Let's say we are trying to go forward and I need to get, uh, I, I need to do like fine tuning, like manual speed is only on two, it's quite fairly slow, but I got quite a bit to go to that position that I want to work with. I will click dead man switch go to the position in here and then activate jog to get to that qu position quickly and then let me go. So it's a very, very useful button if you're trying to a, a do a lot of maneuvering around and then fine tuning. So the next button is a cycle start. So you can see there's a cycle uh, button in here. So that cycle starts pretty much when you are in a cycle mode. So let's go quickly check, check, go in cycle mode, flip into repeat and cycle. And as you can see in here, it will ask if the motor is dead, so we will activate the motor. And also, if you activate the start cycle in here, my robot is moving, doing these things at the moment, because it's, trying, it's running through this program, and it should stop. So there we go, it just finished doing this. is pretty much my little code that I've written that I was playing around. We're going to get to those in the future. But if you let me click the e-stop in here, so that's pretty much by activating the cycle start, it will start running through the program. Also, when you are in a repeat mode, you will see in here you have another window up, uh, pop up in here, which is the step count and uh, repeat once. So if you click on that, so this is where you uh, uh, set, set the conditions for repeat mode. Let's say you only want to do, let's start the program and you only want to do one step. So but you will click this one as once. So do one step and it will stop. And if it continues, it will go through all the steps until all of them are done. And repeat uh, once, uh, repeat, let's say once, it will only repeat it once if the, once the program runs through it. And if it's continuous, you can say repeat continuous, and it will just going to keep going and going and going. So pretty much it's really good, a little feature for you to uh, set up yourself, how, how you want to check your code or your program. And I want to check the steps as well, how they work. So the next button is going to be, uh, it is in INS, which is insert. So uh, let's go into the teach mode. And let's say I want to insert the steps. So all I need to uh, click uh, A and insert and um, uh, modify insert step 19. So if you click yes, it will add a, well, we just added whatever that uh, step was there that where, where I was working on. So obviously I don't need that there. So it was kind of going to mess with my uh, little, uh, little program that I created. But basically all this is just inserted step above. So uh, from that, what we're going to do, uh, next button is obviously delete. So we're just going to click and delete. And that this way we are just going to delete the step. So we can insert the step and delete the step. The next one is AUX MOD, which is basic auxiliary modifications. So let's say you are in this little menu in here and you want to change specific step. 
So let's go down to a. Uh, I've got actually nothing in it that I can change it with. So let's. Uh, if I want to change something, let's say I changed it in uh, auxiliary data, which is this data in here, so all the inputs and outputs and everything in between. We're gonna get to those in the future videos. If I a uh, uh, create a step, so let's go insert. So insert the step. So as you can see in here, I have joint five. So it's step 15, which is joint uh, motion, which is five, one, zero, and one, which represents those things. We're gonna get those in a minute. And I want to uh, change the speed to six. And if I want to modify it, I would click it like that. And it will modify that to speed six, that specific step. So this pretty much, which is actually modify. So the same, same in here, as you can see in here is position modify. Let's say you, this 15th step, you have manually moved the robot into some different step and you want to modify it. All you need to do is click position A, position modify, and it will add those new coordinates to this step. So that's pretty much auxiliary modify and position modify. And this guy in here, which is a record button. So as you can see, it's got nice, nice, nice green in here. Record means it pretty much records the step. As you can see, when I clicked on it, record program step at the last program step. So because you need to be in last program step to add a new step. So you need to move down and only then you are able to add a, another step. There we go. So I don't need that. I'm just going to delete it. And where was the other step? Uh, this one and I will delete that as well. And that's pretty much is a record position. Every time you move position, uh, move to position, you can use this record button. We're going to check that out. We're going to get the first writing, uh, designing our first program. And also, yes, as you can see in here, this is called o.write, which is overwrite. So basically all this all you will do, if you are in any of the step, it will overwrite that specific step with this new uh, setup with the new coordinates and, and uh, all auxiliary data as well. So next is there is a uh, three buttons in here, C, uh, uh, CL1, CL2 and CLN. So those are a switches that uh, switches the signal data for the clamps instructions for one and two. So we're going to get to those in a future video. So it's to do with the clamps. We're going to get to those a little bit later on in a future videos because there's there's quite a bit involved before we start using those. Okay, okay. So the next one up is uh, this button here. Basically, is a is got close and like a swap between the pages. And Kawasaki has divided their screen into three sections. So from here to here will be a section A. From there to there is going to be section B, and from there onto the bottom is going to be section C. So this button in here, as you can see, it jumps between those two sections. So as you can see, there's another another name called, let's go, called close onto it. So let's say we have clicked a monitoring. So let's select uh, any monitoring that we are trying to monitor. Let's say our uh, data, access data monitoring. As you can see in here, it gave me this window. And if I no longer want to see this window, I'm going to click A and close it. So that way you will close the window. Next one is a button seven. So basically it's a seven and also it will take you by clicking A, it will take you directly to the speed. So uh, if you change the camera at the moment, you can see I'm staying on timers. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna click speed and it will jump back to the speed. So like a quick shortcut, a quick button to get to the specific area where you're trying to work on. And same goes for accuracy, so the accuracy and timer and uh, for the tools. So there's all in here by clicking A button. It will pretty much navigate you quickly to the specific area on the screen that when you are trying to work with. The next one it is we have a run hold button. So if you if you click without A, so it will hold it. And if you click with A and A and uh, hold button again, it will uh, select run. So basically it will put that into run mode. So next up, it is uh, OX, WX, and WS. Those are pretty much used for calling up input uh, screens for the OX instruction data for block teaching. So uh, we're gonna get those into the future. At the moment, they really don't do anything apart from just uh, calling things up. So uh, at the moment, we're not gonna test them out. Once I get to them, we'll be much more better to understand and uh, how they work in the future. But after that, we have a, a CC. There's a, the, there's a screen called interface panel. So if you click on it, it will take you directly to the interface panel. Interface panel will be like your standard HMR where you can design buttons and things like that and each one of those things can read uh, different datas or activate different datas and so on so by clicking that one it will just uh, take you in between the pages 
also if you a uh, click uh, a and cc it doesn't really at the moment do anything for you but what it does it calls up input screen for the cc instruction data during block teaching at the moment nothing's been set up and nothing's really working Alrighty, so the next button it is this button in here which is a kin uh, kia stands for k keep input and we is typically employed to define update or manipulate the values of input variables that our robot control systems will use during operations this is something we're going to be checking out in later videos when we're going to get into as language and so on so uh, from there on we have a cl.aux cl.aux is calling up input screens for the clamp auxiliaries again it's something that we are going to be a, a checking out into a uh, future and on and offs are pretty much uh, turns off uh, like off will be designed for turning off the specified actual clamp sig uh, signal for forcibly and on it's the same thing it just turns forcibly on so those are pretty much for those and obviously the one two and three this that's self-explanatory the next button is going to be a j slash e and uh, in a blue and uh, underneath will be like an i when you click without collecting a so you will open a menu where you can select how you want uh, to program write your program in teachpad as you can see here as options near with uh, teach as language post teach and program edit so uh, if you want to go into AS language, the one we're going to be using quite a lot in the future, you can do that in this screen as well if you wish to. Again, something like that we are going to be checking out in the future videos. Then we have J slash E. J slash E switches the settings of JE jump edit instruction. So again, something we're going to be a uh, uh, checking out in the future videos because there's quite a bit more extra to do with it. So then we have a standard enter, we have the same as that enter, so pretty much the same thing, so accept things. And uh, from there on, uh, we have only thing that's left is is uh, standard uh, comma and uh, and zero and underscore and dot. So it's pretty much those are self-explanatory. And the last thing what I completely forgot to mention it is a BS. A BS stands for a uh, uh, backspace so let's say if you go into any of the programs so let's go into so okay, if you go in into input you can see when you write something into it like blah 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 and you have a backspace in here and you also have backspace in here so you can use it there or there so uh it's 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 basically a backspace like a normal into under the keyboard and that's ladies and gentlemen it's pretty much to do with all the buttons on this uh, teachpad in the following videos you're going to get into a bit more into the screen you run through the menus and the menus and all the things that you can see on the screen and other bits you're going to check in them out to best of my ability again there's a lot we're going to be getting on into future videos so this is basically in the following video is going to be overviews on the menus so i will see you all in next video